All right, guys, so it's time for a quick review. Right here, I have the unlocked LED gaming keyboard. And you can actually find this at five below. Um, $5, it's funny, they actually used the $5.55 price tag to actually keep the box closed. <laughs> I'm guessing that this might have been a return. I could be wrong about that, but let's go ahead and unbox this together and I will show you what comes with it and uh, just how good it actually works in general for everyday use. I know it's a keyboard and a lot of people think it's just plug and play, but you do have to understand that these keyboards are built cheap a lot of times. Sometimes the buttons get sticky, sometimes it gets stuck with use over time. And do understand that this recording has been done over a week period of time me actually using it. So I appreciate it if you guys like the video and all that fun stuff. So anyway, with that being said, let's get right into it. So this is everything that comes inside the box. And like I said to you guys, it's actually funny. Uh, sometimes I do reviews backwards where I'll use it before reviewing the product, but uh, I did that on this video also, believe it or not. I actually have two of these. I always buy two of the same product so that I can go ahead and review it, you know, give you an accurate one while also unboxing it. So before we even get into it, obviously there is, and the timestamps are in the description for you guys that hate hearing me talk. Some people express that, but hey, it's my channel. Bye. <laughs> but anyway, you have your key scroll lock to turn the light function on and off. Right here, we have the uh, telling you the compatibility. That doesn't mean much to most people, but as long as you have USB socket, this should work. You have your function keys, which work as mute, volume, blah, 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 things like that. So I will leave this in the description right here so you can screenshot what the functionality of this keyboard does. We're gonna, we won't be testing this, we'll be just be using the keyboard itself. And that is pretty much it, there's nothing else to it. So right here, they will come inside the plastic like so. Pretty clean if you ask me. And as soon as I open this, you know, honestly, it doesn't feel bad. Uh, look, It definitely looks cheap. I'm not gonna hold you, it does look cheap. And what's funny is that normally I use Five Below products all over my computer. But lately I was like, I don't want my, my wife's desk to look better than mine. Like I have a lot of high-end keyboards and microphones and things like that. Nothing wrong with, you know, using cheaper stuff, but I already have better things. But this isn't bad for someone, at least initially opening in the box, for someone that just wants a quick keyboard to use. Not everybody is interested in gaming. Some people just want, uh, you know, a keyboard just to hook up to their computer and they're not so much into the comfort of how it feels or looks. So. It is a full keyboard, if I'm correct. Like you have your numeral pad over here. You have your up, down, left, right. Obviously some keyboards have, uh, what's it called? Little scroll buttons that allow you to ch change the volume up and down and things like that. Some other keyboards have extra buttons over here that you could preset mainly for, well, you can use it for whatever you want, but a lot of people use it for gaming. But this is the standard keyboard, if I'm right. I never seen a uh, space bar push down this much. That's a little weird, but just minor gripes. Anyhow, I'm gonna go ahead and plug it up to the computer. We're gonna take a look at it because this is an LED keyboard. So we're gonna take a look at it with the lights and then I'm gonna let you know actually how it was over a period of time, just how it feels and did I have any issues clicking buttons in or did it like, you know, make any mishaps, all that good stuff. Let's get into it. Alrighty guys, so this is my, this is actually my JLAC keyboard. This is one of the keyboards that I use because it's super small and I like a minimalist desk. Not the best one, but it does work well for me. Uh, we'll talk about that in another video. I already reviewed that. Here's the Steam Deck right here. Gotta move all the stuff out of the way because this is a pretty chunky keyboard. So, put it right here so you guys can see it in all its glory. Let me adjust the camera real fast. There we go. So you can see majority of it, that's good enough. You don't need to see every key, but that's good enough. The cord is right here. So you can see me plug it up in real time and I'm not faking it. Here we are. So as soon as it lights up. Okay. I mean, the buttons work. I'm wondering why it's not lighting up. I probably have to hit the function that they're talking about. So let me cut away real fast and I'm gonna come back with that function key to see if I can get the lights to light up. It looks like the lights are already off, which is weird. Normally these keyboards, as soon as you plug them in, the lights are on. Let me try that again. Nope, not working the way I want it to. So let me just go ahead and get that uh, key sequence and we'll start again. All right, so I'm back and I figured it out. Uh, I actually forgot the sequence at first. So right here, 
where it says scroll lock. This is where this controls the volume up and down. I'm sorry, the volume. This controls the uh, brightness of the keyboard. Well, not so much the brightness, but the light. So let me just shut up and press it. This is how it looks. So if I put this down, as you see, it's green right here, mixed with a little blue with these pieces. Um, it looks like the whole thing isn't keyboard lit. Like right here, there's like lights in certain sections of the keyboard, as you can see. And then it kind of just spreads in different places. So up top, you got a light right here. It kind of spreads over to the F1 keys. The keys themselves do not light up, just so you know. So if you're wondering if the keys light up, absolutely not. Just to show you, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the light off while you're watching this video. Here we are. And as you can see, the keys are not lit up at all. So that is very, very disappointing. Um, I figured that it would, but I do will say is that if it's dark inside of the room and you take a look at the keys, you shouldn't have any issues whatsoever with keeping them lit. If we flip the keyboard over, we do have the latches right here in the back. I'm gonna turn the light on so you guys can actually see that. Okay, I'm back. So if you look at the keyboard, there are latches in the back of the keyboard right here. These flip right up, no problem, to give your keyboard a little stand. Uh, and if you have one of those little armband stands right here, you can put your hands on it to rest it so that you can start typing. Now, Buttons actually work pretty well. Let me go ahead and open up an application real fast. Again, I cannot type to save my life. So for you guys out there looking at a professional typing review, I am not your guy, but I'm gonna type a few things. So, the true blue, I don't know, Yeti, <laughs> type anything. It's on cap lock, so we type cap lock, that works just fine. Uh, over here, as you can see, you have the caps lock symbol lighting up. You have number locks lighting up. And what's the last one? Is that the lights? Yep. So this symbol right here is for the lights to let you know it's on and off, though it's self-explanatory. This one is for the uh, caps locks and this one is for the number lock, which I'll leave number lock on for right now. So everything seems to work pretty fine. Uh, I don't have any issues, let me turn it back on, with any of the buttons so far. Actually none, as a matter of fact, Let's give you guys a better view so you don't have to look at me from an angle. Let's do it this way. Here we are. Get that stand. You know what's funny? After two years of doing the EOS network, I never bothered buying a proper stand for the camera. <laughs> I always just used one of those small two feet, not even two feet, a foot table stands, but I finally bought one and I didn't realize how much easier it is to do this. I got to really step up production. But anyway, the buttons work just fine. Shift tab, everything is working that I'm looking at right now. Um, none of the buttons still stuck. So I, a lot of times with some cheaper keyboards or just keyboards in general, I actually have a keyboard that's like $200 and I wanna show you that right now. Well, 100 and something normally. And that keyboard, if you get any liquid on it whatsoever, the keys get extremely sticky. You have to pull the keys off. Actually, don't mind all the noise, I'm dropping stuff. This is the keyboard right here where it's very clicky. This is one of the ASIO keyboards. My wife actually got me this, I don't know, about four years ago, but I still had this guy. Buttons pop right off, very easy to clean. And again, for the average person, you're not going to necessarily, oh, one of the keys came off, I gotta find it. But anyway, for the average person that uses a keyboard, Unless you're using a mouse like this, because I have ergonomic design uh, mice for my hand, because I have not quite carpal tunnel, but I don't want to develop it, so I use different mice, 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 a mouse. <laughs> this doesn't feel bad, I actually like it. So I am going to use this, like I said, over time, and I'm going to come back, we're going to talk about it, and is this actually worth the asking price, which is $5.55 after a week's time. Be aware that I already purchased this bad boy, like I said before, uh, I already have one for review and it was actually a different color. But regardless, what, what, no, no, wait a minute. I don't wanna mix up keyboards. I do have another one of these. This is the unlocked one, that's right. I do have another one of these. There's so many keyboards I have to review that I'm starting to get confused. But yes, <laughs> I'll come back after a week and let you know how it is. All right, guys, so this is the week review of this thing. I know I use the same table and stuff, so it is what it is. Uh. I don't mind it. Now, the keyboards that I normally use, let me kind of give you an idea what it is I'm talking about. 
I use this guy right here, which is a Microsoft keyboard. Matter of fact, let me push you back so we can put you out of the way so you can actually see what it is that I use. This is one of my favorite keyboards. Of course, I put these on here because it doesn't actually have those hooks in the back to put it on the angle. This is one of my favorite keyboards, especially my go-to when I switch, uh, I switch a lot of keyboards for reviews. This guy is the one that I got for Walmart for a whopping $20. And this is a JLab keyboard, this is $20. Now, like I always say, these are two wireless keyboards that do have dongles. Um, when I press the buttons on them, they're they're responsive, of course, but obviously if you're typing, you're typing tons of papers, term papers and things like that, you are going to feel fatigue in your hands with keyboards like these because they're small and I have big hands. So that's where keyboards like this guy right here comes in handy. And when you look at it, again, you know, it has the hooks in the back like we discussed before. It doesn't look like much, but you have to understand that you're typing. And the buttons feel responsive as you're typing. Uh, nothing got stuck. I did purposely coat this with water, meaning I didn't spill water on it. But what I did was I had like a, uh, um, a rag with water drenched and I just rubbed it against it just to see what would happen if the buttons would get sticky. I tried it with a little bit of juice. I know it, it sounds like a lot, but I had to do that because sometimes people eat at their desk. They have crummy fingers. They spill something on the keyboard and it never works the same because remember these buttons don't come off. It's not like this keyboard, which, you know, it's not like this guy, which has sprinkle spring buttons. This feels good. Like when I tap this, it's very responsive. It's almost as if I'm tapping nothing. And if you clean it, these buttons come right off. You could just wipe it down, clean around it, pop it back on, you're good to go. This is a high-end keyboard. Well, I say mid-range, it's like $100, $120, I forget, my wife bought it for me. But anyway, the point is that when I see this guy right here, for $5, it's worked very, very well. It's a standard basic keyboard that you would probably get at Micro Center for five, six, seven bucks anyway. So it is right on in terms of price, it's perfectly fine. I hadn't had any issues, the stickiness didn't cause any problems. Once I wiped down the keyboard, a couple of the buttons was still a little sticky in between, not many. I did a good job of cleaning it off. And again, even when it was sticky, the buttons didn't get stuck down or anything like that. I didn't have any issues. So for you guys out there, obviously it's not water resistant, but it should still work if you get a little Cheeto dust or whatever it is that you're eating and you touch the keyboard, you should still be fine. Uh, if it is a little spill, probably like a little wipe spill or something, you should be fine. But if you pour a couple of juice on this guy, I, I can't help you there. I'm assuming because it's so cheap that it probably would break in that aspect. But for the $5.55 price tag, you can't really go wrong. I don't see anything wrong with it. I like it. I actually like it a lot after using it. I respect it a lot more. It's still hideous as hideous can be, but it is what it is. But anyway, let me know what you guys think. How did you feel about the keyboard when you used it? Did you think it was pretty good? Again, I don't have an issue with this, but of course I'm not a professional typer. If you're wondering what I used with it, it was FL Studio. And FL Studio requires you to press keys in order to hear certain hymns if you don't know the chords itself. You can use the mouse and tap it, but keys is easier to figure out what's what so you can do your sequence. I did some typing, the Ian West Network, which doesn't really require much, uh, nothing untouched, which is just typing in a uh, profile, not profiles, but uh, descriptions and, and like tags and different things like that for the videos. Again, minor, minor work, but for a person that's not out here typing 300 minutes a second or 300 words a second and all that stuff, I'm probably exaggerating, but some people can really type. It works fine for me. I've even uh, let my wife play with this for a little bit. <laughs> pause. No, 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 no pause. That's, that's actually correct. And she liked it too. But of course, when you compare the keyboards that she has versus this one, there's no reason for us to downgrade to this keyboard. But if I didn't have one and I just needed one, this would actually do the job for you guys. I think that it's a pretty decent investment for the $5.55. Anyway, like and subscribe like always guys. And I will see you in the next video.